Hey, scrapbook friends. Welcome to week 37 of our Theme Park Thursday series, um, where I am going through my Disney trip with my daughters in March of 2022, one layout at a time with you every week here on YouTube. Um, today we are at, still at the Animal Kingdom, and we have some yummy treats for you. Um, I also used the Diamond Kite recipe template. This is the first time I've used a recipe template in this uh, series, and actually in a while. I haven't used this... Um, I haven't been using recipe templates very much. I think sometimes I feel like they take too long, but this one didn't take that long at all. I think it turned out really cute. Um, I did stop recording before I completely had finished it, so I just want to show you real quick. I did do some journaling right here on these little edges, and I did a little line, squiggly line, and some little dots around the edges. So that was not finished at the end of the video. I was kind of concluding when I decided, oh yeah, that's what I need to do. So stay tuned to see how this came together, how I dealt with not having any embellishments for the paper that I chose, um, and I think it turned out okay. So hooray for treats, week 37, Theme Park Thursday. So the next thing I've got are these food pictures from Animal Kingdom, and I thought I had more of them. Um, they're all of Katie, apparently, even though we all ate some food. And really this one, I don't know why I took this. This was uh, the Flame Tree Barbecue, but I don't have any pictures of us eating Flame Tree Barbecue food. Um, I took a picture of the Yeti Sunday sign, and that's what we ate. We got that here and a cupcake. I don't really know this. I don't remember the story behind it. And so I want to do something kind of with the, these four pictures. And I was actually thinking we have this brand new diamond kite recipe template. I have not done a lot with the recipe templates, but I thought this would be a fun, um, it, has, it fits four pictures and I've kind of got four pictures and I think I can cut these all down to squares and I think I want to do something with this. So um, I have not um, prepped this, this template yet. So I'm going to go kind of go quickly through the steps of what I do to um, to use a template. I don't use them all the time. I, I thought that I would use them more than I do. So the first thing I like to do is to is to create a, a positioning piece. And I've got this little coin purse that I keep my clips in. And I'm just going to make sure that the logo where it says creative memories is down at the bottom right. So that it's in the, it's in the right direction. Um, I don't even know if you can see it, but um, so that, you know, that when you look at it, this is upright. It's not on its side. It's not upside down. I'm just going to quick put these little um, clips on. You can use it without the clips. Sometimes I do use it without the clips, but um, it just is going to keep it from sliding for this part. And I'm just going to quickly trace around and I'll, I'll snip some of this out. You don't have to watch me do the whole thing, but I'm just going to take a pencil and I really like a mechanical pencil for this because it doesn't ever get dull. And I'm just going to trace around keeping these as straight as I can because they they are very thin and so they do kind of want to slide around when you when you trace them okay so I'm just going to go quickly through this hole oops see that one I was crooked um through the whole through the whole template I'm going to draw all the lines out and then I will come back and we'll do the next step Okay, I think I've done all my lines. Only this one did I kind of mess up a little bit and that's not gonna matter because this is just a positioning guide now for once I cut my pieces. Um, I am gonna write on here logo, just so that I remember. This one, it doesn't really matter because this is very uh, symmetrical, but for future reference, I might I might want to, to have that. And you can see some of my lines are crooked. Oh, look right here, I forgot to, I forgot to, I forgot to draw that one and this one. So I'm going to really quick just draw these two little pieces. I thought I checked. These will be quick. Just make sure it's positioned. This is just so that when I cut my pieces, I'll have a place to put them. All right, so I'm not going to need to use this for all the parts. I'm going to start with choosing a, ba a base page. Um, and this is going to leave a half inch border kind of all the way around. And because of all of this kind of teal on here, I think I want to either use like an Island Waters or a dark sea green. Yeah, I think I'm going to try 
I'm going to try both of those. Island Waters might be like this. We might have a different color blue. Oops, sorry. Um, we might have a different color blue that matches this. Let me see what I can find. All right. So I took my paper over with me. This is dark sea green, and that could work if I decide I want like a dark background and some brighter colors on top. This one actually left the post-it note on. This is terrestrial teal, which was from the, um, we had a cardstock buffet earlier this summer, and I think this is like a perfect match. So I may be inclined to use that one. This is the Island Waters, which I thought was gonna be the right color, and it kind of matches nicely with this, but it felt a little, a little washed out. So I think I'm gonna go with the terrestrial teal. Um, and then I think as I'm looking at these colors, I think that the uh, summer, sweet summer, which I've used several times in this book, might be some of the colors I need. Although I don't know, what else do we have that's kind of in these, in these same colors? You know, vitamin C had some, and she's got that tropical shirt. Um, let me see what kind of paper. Um, designer papers I have that go along with this. I've not, you know, I've not prepped any of this ahead. So you guys are lucky that I know how to snip out the parts of me rummaging through my bins of paper. Okay, so I've gone through my whole, my bins of paper and I pulled out a few that I think might work. I have vitamin C, which has some of this color. We've used this one before. Summer Lovin', which was an advisor gift. It has some of those same colors. I think I've used this one too. This is an old, old one. This Color Me Happy was an 8x8 pack from the old CM. I don't know if these colors will work, but I did kind of see this little turquoise color, and I thought maybe it would work, so I'm going to keep that. Oh, smaller size papers work great if you're using these recipe templates because you're going to cut it up anyway. Here is Sweet Summer, which we've used before. Summertime, which we used recently. And actually, Birthday Bonanza has a lot of these same colors um it's a little birthday ish but you know it just also has you know these fun bright colors that i'm loving for this album so i don't know which one i'm going to use i'm i'm thinking i'm kind of putting birthday bonanza to the side and maybe i'm putting sweet summer to the side even though that's what i pulled out okay now look what i'm seeing is here in summertime i've got this paper which was in here which might mean that i've gotten these two mixed up Maybe I'll, maybe I'll start with these because I'm liking the bright. There's some pink. Got this terrestrial teal. Um, so maybe I'm using these two. Let's see what these papers are. I've got some. Oh, look, I made some cards. You are the flip to my flop. Didn't send them to anybody, but I made them. A splashing good time. I need to find this for my family reunion scrapbook too. Um, the pink. I like the pink. That kind of could go. Not sure about the little sunflowers or the um, swimsuits for this one. They're not sunflowers, they're starfish. I do know that. Oh, definitely the suns, the popsicles maybe even could go. Here's one, here's a layout that I apparently did, made a pre-made layout before I had a YouTube channel and I haven't, you know, done anything with that. I'm going to move this to my stash of pre-made layout so I'll remember to put pictures on it. Um, I've got some solids in here. I think these are the ones that I'm possibly likely to use. These three, not these. Oh, this is all going to be the same on the back because it was all the cut apart. That little coconut drink, the popsicles could be used as a embellishments or, um, you know, a journal box or something. But now I think I'm going to also pull this one out because I could use this flower. That's going to go. This um, starfish that doesn't actually go here. This greenish turquoise. Oh, I do like the little... Um, flamingos. That might be too much. Depends on how much of it I use. We got the pineapple. We've got the little coconut drinks. That could work. Got some little drink umbrellas. That could work. This palm tree and the stripe. All right. I think I'll pull this one out. That's got this 
this teal and the flowers, even though I don't think I'm going to use that flower. Although I think I've said that before and then I did use it. All right. So I think the first thing I want to do is to cut my photos and decide where they're going to go. Now I could use the template and, you know, trace around these. You'd want to use the, um, the photo labeling pencil. Anytime you're you're tracing um, on a photo, you want to use this, which is a really soft graphite pencil. It's not wax, but um, this is what you used to draw on with your photos. But instead, because this is just a square, I'm just going to cut it. And so I'm just going to measure to see. It looks like it's a little bit smaller than four inches in between the um, the gaps. Yeah, it's like three, oh, this is annoying, three and seven eighths for these pictures. I'm sorry to do this to you. I hate to do that. I could probably do four inch, but I really want to keep that gap between the images. So we're going to try and figure out three and seven eighths. Actually, I think I'll cut it to four. And then we'll see when I go here that it's going to just be exactly this right size. I just need to cut basically an eighth of an inch off. Um, you guys can't see. All right. So I don't know if you can see that like it just it's the, the picture itself is exactly the width of this and I want it to be inside so that it's going to leave that little frame. So I'm just going to cut off just a smidge. It looks like I could cut off about maybe a quarter inch on two sides. I don't really want to go down to three and a quarter. I'm just going to eyeball it between these two and see what that does. Still a little bit, I think I could still get away with cutting off a smidge more. And that is of course a technical term, a smidge between there and there and here and another smidge. All right, now it fits inside the inside the square and doesn't cover it up. So that's going to be looks like it's just over three and three quarters right here. So maybe I'll just cut these at three and three quarters and that will all be the same size. So we will do that three and three quarters. Hope that's not too short. Well, now it's a little bit small. Oh, well, that's what I did. We're going to do three and three quarters and I'm going to go ahead and cut all of them to that same size. I'll zoom back to a normal thickness. Oh, I'm going to have to cut off part of her body. Well, no, I'm not. Yeah, her hair, I guess. Three and three quarters. Actually, maybe I'll mat these. Michelle and I do eat. I don't know why we're, we are not represented in the snackies at the Animal Kingdom on this date. Cut this this way. Not going to be able to cut off the person that was sitting next to us. And then this one. Three and three quarters. All right. So now I'm going to take my background piece that I've already traced all this on and I'm going to arrange my photos. I think I'll do right here, right here, right here, and right like this. Okay, so I can kind of see the outline of the design and this is going to give me an idea of what I want to do. So these are going to be a little bit small. But I think now what I want to do is decide how I want to arrange this. Like I could do like a design that goes all the way around each of these. I could do these all in different colors and kind of make it um, geometric. Or I could do the easy way, which would be to do some diagonal lines like this. 
kind of behind and then I don't have to cut all the small pieces. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do, hmm. Cause I kind of like that, but maybe if I mat the photo and put it on top, then I could just do some squares. That would be so much easier than cutting all these little pieces out. So I think I'm not actually gonna be doing a great job showing you how to use a recipe template for this. Um, I do have a, a video uh, about how to use a recipe template that you can follow, but I think I'm gonna just cut some squares and position it like this way. Um, and this one is, this is a four inch square right here. Oh, lo and behold, I have a four inch square right here already cut. So if I do this, see it's already coming together. And then I could then cut little the little triangles here and the big triangles on the corner. I'm going to measure the long side of this triangle. Oh, look, that one's four inches too. But that but I don't have that doesn't mean a four inch triangle. So this is going to be two and three quarter inch triangle. Um I don't want to use that one. I want some contrast. Let me use this pink out here on the outside. What was the other pink? I had that light pink. Oh, the popsicles. I think I like the popsicles. So I need to cut a square that is two and three quarters. I need to cut two of them and then cut them in half. So I'm going to do that two and three quarters. Oh, cut them in half. So I'm going to use my little sight lines to make sure that I cut on the right spot. I am lining it up with the lines I can see on my mat first, so I get it generally where I want it. Actually, I should move that out of the way. Get it gener generally where I want it. All right, we're going to scoop back down again. So you can see I'm lining up on the, you can see the dotted line on the mat right here and right here. But now I'm going to take these little sight lines and these live up in the edge of your track. And so sometimes people say, I don't have those, but you do have them. The first few times you go to take them out, it can be a little tricky. You might want to use like your multi-purpose tool or something to get, to get it out the first time, but I promise it's in there. And it's just got this little line on it that tells you exactly where your cut mark is going to be. So I'm going to line up the edge of that right here and the edge of it right here. And then I can make my triangle cuts. And where did the other one go? There it is. Do the same thing. You can also use this 40 degree line, 45 degree line, actually, when you're cutting a square. I always forget that part. But I'm still going to need to line it up with the sight line guys to make sure that I get the corners just spot on. Oops. Too hard to see when I'm this far off the screen. All right. Oops. And it scooted a little bit, so I didn't quite get that perfect. Well, we're going to pretend I got it perfect. Don't tell anyone. All right. So these will go in the corners here. So I'm all about shortcuts. I think you guys probably know that about me by now. Um, I don't want to do extra work if I don't have to. And so you can trace and cut and I'll do maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do these pieces traced and cut. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to look. You can watch my other video if you want to know about tracing and cutting. We're going to do this the, the easier way. I don't know where my other picture is. So now I need something else. I do like that with little popsicles. I kind of like the green stripe. 
if I do the green stripe, I would definitely want to just cut the strip and then cut the edges off the sides. And this is nice because I think it is a 45 degree angle right here. And it is a one and three quarter inch strip. And I'm going to need, I, I, I might, I might need, Will I need all four of them? I don't know if I can be able to fit four of them on this. This book. We might be doing some some piecing to um, make it all fit. So let's see how many one and three quarter inch stripes I can get. One. Oh, I think we'll be okay. We'll have enough. Maybe I'll just cut two for now, and then if I need the others, I will cut the others. Okay, so this one, there's probably a way that I can use that 45 degree angle and cut it. But rather than do that, because that starts feeling like math, I'm going to do use this, uh, use the template, because that was my whole point, was I was going to show you about using the template. So because I want this to be the front, I'm going to cut on the back. And because it's perfectly symmetrical, it'll be the same. So I'm just going to put this right here. It does line up. make sure that I've got the edge of my paper against this and then I'm just going to draw with my pencil the two cuts I want to make yeah I'm going to need one piece one 12 inch piece for each of these except that they're all the same so I'm going to just cut them all at once which I know is a little bit scary oh please tell me I can fit two more one and one and three quarter inch pieces I should be able to. Oh, I should be exactly one and three quarter inches. Yes. One and three quarter inches. And then the last one, look, that is one and three quarter inches right there. Bam. Okay. So it's a little bit scary to cut these all. I am going to do it on the trimmer. And I'm going to cut them all upside down just in case. Oh, maybe I should do it with scissors. Well, I don't know. That's scary. Okay, I've got it all lined up. And I did it the wrong direction to be able to use. Well, no, look right there. If I line it up with this 45 degree angle line, I think that that's going to help me make sure that my cut is straight. I cut through all four. Bam, right there along the line. That was pretty dang impressive. Okay, but now I need to cut this other piece, and in order to do that, I would have to flip it and cut it that way. Ooh. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to do this one and use the sight lines again. This is the bad, you know what? I, ooh. Yeah, I'm going to do it sort of on pencil lines. There we go. Hopefully that worked. Let's cross our fingers. The smart thing to do would have been to flip it and cut on the back, but you know, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Oops. So now we've got this. I think I am going to have to mat these photos now so that they give me the color that I want, and maybe I'll use the pink. I do love pink, you guys know that about me. And I could do kind of that pineapple. I would do the, have to do the exact same thing. I'd need a bigger piece of this because I won't be able to get four. I mean, this is covered up, right? So I don't have to have, you know, maybe I just need these pieces. Let's see, that is only, Oh, that's a 5 eighths inch piece, which is an uncomfortable size to have to cut. 5 eighths, it's like, like on the line. It's, it's more than 5 eighths. It's closer to 3 quarters, but it's not 3 quarters. And it's, it's like a oh, 15, no, 13 sixteenths. We're not doing that. We're going to, we're going to trace and cut for these. And so I'm just going to cut these little pieces and then we're not going to have the, um, the strip. We'll see how that turns out. I may be sorry, but what I'm going to do is rather than trace again on the side that I want to cut out, I'm going to trace on the back 
and I just need these inside pieces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm, I'm gonna use one side of the, oh no, this is the piece I want. This piece right here, these outside triangles. One side of this is the edge of the paper. All right, back we go. All right, let's see. I gotta move me so that you can see what I've done now that I've zoomed in. This part, this inside triangle is what I want. So it's this piece that comes right to the end that I need to cut. And so I'm going to, this one I don't have to flip over. This is the logo side. Ordinarily, I would then flip this over so I know that I'm doing it on the back because I'm writing doing it on the back of the, um, the template as well. But I'm any cuts that I don't have to make are great. So I'm going to, actually I'm not gonna do that because I wanna make sure that all my cuts are consistent. So I'm lining up the edge of this with the edge of the paper, and I'm off again, sorry. I'm lining up the edge of the paper, edge of the paper with the outside edge, so I am gonna to have to cut all the sides. And I like to put my finger on this to keep it from sliding. And I wanna make sure that I write my lines dark enough so that I can see them. You could actually even use like a pen for this if you wanted to. I like to use a pencil so that I don't, um, I don't have any ink that might bleed through. And really, truly, this is all the same piece, so I think I can just cut the same, draw the same. I, I rotated it this time, but they're exactly the same. So I think I'm just gonna do this four times, and I am giving that same little gap. And I could probably cut this on my trimmer, but I think I'm gonna use my scissors. Um, just because the cuts are relatively short. And if I hate it, I've got all this other paper and I could come back and recut it. When I've got really long cuts, you know, like this, I love to use my trimmer, but if it's a short cut like this, I can make it one swoop of my scissor blade. I can do that. And I have these fun, fun purple handled scissors that were part of the Alzheimer's um, release from Creative Memory. So I'm just gonna cut. And when you cut with this, you need to be consistent. I like to cut just on the outside of the line. So I leave the pencil line on there so that everything is, is the same width wise when I'm done. If, if sometimes you cut on the line and sometimes you cut outside the line, your, your pieces won't be quite as consistent. So I am having to cut a little bit more, but hopefully, Hopefully this will work out. I, I can cut straight. I feel pretty confident about my straight cutting abilities. And so I think what I'll do is now just go along. Well, actually, I'll go this way. I'll cut on that angle. And this is where it's a little forgiving if your pencil lines are crooked because you can straighten it up when you cut. You could absolutely do this with the trimmer if you wanted to. And it's a little hard to see on this very busy pattern too, I know. And I could decide maybe that I want to use the little coconut drink side, actually. And I'd have to just then erase all my pencil lines. And maybe I will. Maybe I'll try it and see what I think about that side. And I'm rotating it around so that I can stay on the outside of the pencil line. to have that consistency but I believe I'm going to end up with eight maybe not identical maybe they're going to be mirrored pieces four and four and we'll see how it looks it might not look good because uh, all the rest have the um, aren't going to have the gap we'll see if I map the photo I think that will make a difference too Okay. So 
sorry, boring to watch somebody cut, I'm sure. But I like you to see that it doesn't take that long. You know, I do, you guys know I do some layouts that take forever. And hopefully this one is not one of those. So I don't know if these purple handled scissors are still available. They came out a couple weeks ago um, as part of the Alzheimer's fundraiser. Last I heard they were hot. Um, that sometimes means that they are running low on inventory and sometimes it just means that they're very popular. So I hope they ordered enough that anybody who wanted a pair of the purple handled Alzheimer's awareness scissors was able to get one. And so I am just making sure before I start sticking anything down that I like the way this looks. Okay, so that's what this piece that's the back of the template guide is what I use always use it for. Oh, I kind of like those suns too, though. All right. I've got these. And now we'll do these pieces. All right, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. And in like woodworking, I believe they call this dry fitting. I used this phrase at a retreat I was at last weekend and somebody looked at me funny, but I think it's like a real phrase I just made, didn't make up, that I was gonna dry fit my pieces without sticking anything down. Let's see. All right, so this is kind of cool because it is going to give me a little bit of that gap. Ooh, I think I, I think I do like it with some of them cut in stripes and some of them cut in um, having that, that piece going around. Where's my other piece of picture of Katie? There it is. I kind of like this, but I don't see where I can, I can maybe cut that out and put it in the middle. All right, so that's the that's the dry fit version of this layout and I think I'm ready to stick it down so I'm going to pull out this piece of terrestrial teal and now we're going to pull back the template again and maybe the clips um I'll go ahead and use the clips just because I know that's you know the the proper way to do it even though Truthfully, I'm usually kind of lazy and, and don't bother. I have also heard of people who use repositionable adhesive to stick their templates down. That works great if you're doing it on cardstock. Not so great if you're doing it on designer paper because sometimes the repo will pick up the, um, the pattern on the paper. So, and this is actually a little bit hard because I didn't cut all the pieces. Um, I'm gonna have to slide some things under. I'm gonna use repositionable. I know, don't be surprised. Um, and I'm going to slide it under here, position it, oops, it's a little bit harder and it's a little smidge smaller. Okay. No, that's, ah, that's good right there. All right. We'll stick this guy down and then these pieces that um, I cut might be a little bit big just because I had to cut them myself. They seem like they're fitting okay. They're touching the edges a little bit and so when I go to pick this up I'm going to have to kind of hold them down like this and lift this over the top but the other pieces should be easy. And because I used the, you know, the pre-cut piece, the, my, my gaps in between the uh, template might not be, might not be exact. And that's kind of where the beauty of this layout comes is when you get these really nice crisp lines, it kind of gives you a, a stained glass-ish looking effect. 
but I'm excited. I haven't used a recipe template in a while. I think in my head, I feel like they take a lot more time than a regular layout, but this one I don't think did. I think that this has come together really quickly, partly because I didn't, you know, fussy cut out each of the individual pieces. I used some shortcuts by, you know, just doing the big corners and the big stripes. All right, so now I'm gonna lift these all up and tuck these under. And the fun thing about a, the recipe templates is kind of when you take everything off and you kind of have this big reveal at the end. So we'll do this piece. And I am definitely using repositionable because after I get the template off, I probably will want to, um, you know, reposition it. I mean, just make it so that it's straight, but. Okay, that looks good. What do you think? Looking good. I will probably actually go back and put some permanent adhesive on a few of these pieces. Maybe not these little ones, but I'll actually I'll put my pictures down with permanent and I think that will help hold everything in place. They, the perm, the repositionable does get very, very sticky after a while. Um, Creative Memories does not call it permanent, but definitely if you try to take it off, it will, it will rip or, and or rip the paper, which is basically what happens when you use a permanent adhesive. You know, even a permanent adhesive, you can take stuff off. It's just going to rip when you take it off. So I really like this with the stripe too. I think that added a lot. And I really like that I was able to use paper from like four summers ago, this um, summertime uh, paper pack. I used it for something else recently. Was it the title page? I think it was the title page. So I was talking to somebody at the retreat I went to last weekend about, hello, Renee, if you're watching, um, about using up old stuff. And so I, I hope that I'm inspiring some of you to, to use your old stash. Take the little clips off the corners to put this piece on. Mm. All right, this is the part where we're going to use the repositionable to uh, make sure that it's exactly where we want it. I've taken the little clips off this these edges okay that didn't work <laughs> all right i think i'm going to take these off because it's i'm having trouble tucking it under here so i just can fit the corners on i'm just going to eyeball it actually i could use my ruler just to make sure that I'm, I've got everything lined up along the sides. So even right now, it doesn't look perfectly magical, but there's the half inch line. So I'm kind of lining it up with that, but I want it to match both of these corners. I want there to be a visual line here and here and here and here. Looks like a little bit bigger gap. They don't really make these necessarily so that you can just do the shortcut of cutting on your trimmer, but um, I do it anyway. <laughs> always like a shortcut, which is funny because, you know, my videos are always way longer than my friend's videos. All right, there we go. I think I want a little reposition on the corner of that one because it's poking up. Now we're going to put the pictures on. Oh, yeah. Me likey. And what I'm doing is I'm lining up the corners of the picture with the stripe. And so that's getting it exactly centered. So now I just have to decide, do I want to mat these pictures with a little border? Are they getting lost on the page? I kind of think they are getting a little bit lost on the busy background. And I think I'm going to do a dark pink 
or a light colored mat. Um, maybe this is where the Island Waters comes in. Just a little smidge of a mat in this Island Waters. It's close in color. All right, we're gonna try it. So these were three and three quarter inch pictures. So I'm gonna cut this these mats into four inch mats. And of course I need four of them. I suppose I should have cut one and then decided if I liked it, but I think I'm going to like it. I'm going to just double check just because sometimes our paper has a little bit of extra. No, oh, oh, that one's just spot on. Okay. We can even do this without the pictures and see how we like it. Again, I can use the points on this on these squares along the edge. Okay, that didn't goes right up to the edge that way. If I want to do that. Kind of takes my takes my um the little gap away from this section. But then that kind of makes it look like it's a solid piece behind it, which maybe I want. All right, which do we like better? We like being able to see the spacing between here. Or do we like having it like butt up against that so it looks like it's solid behind? Well, I think it almost it's almost a six of one, half a dozen of the other. All right, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna map these guys. And then I'm gonna butt it up against the um the yellow. Actually, maybe I'll scoot the yellow in just a hair because there's no other real gaps anywhere. And this is a little bit wider than that anyway. So I'm lining up the corners there and there. Do all of them. And then I'm going to go back and adjust those little um, yellow pieces. And then I need a title for all the yummy snacks. And I think I've already used uh, yummy snacks as a title. Um, I've already used probably I'm just here for the food, even though I haven't done it in this album. Somebody actually, I was reading somewhere that said they used chat GPT, which is one of those AI programs. And they asked it for a scrapbook title. Ask ChatGPT what they should use um, to title their scrapbook page, and it actually came back with some good suggestions. So, if I uh, if I wanted to get on my computer, I could look for scrapbook titles about theme park food. But I think I have not resorted yet to needing artificial intelligence to um, come up with my scrapbook titles for me. All right, so if you see, I took the corner of the picture and I put it on this line. I guess I should have put it in the gap. And then this is all now a little bit not the same. So I'm just going to, and that one actually is a little farther down. So I'm just going to scoot these in a smidge so I still have the whole border. Maybe. No, because now they're touching. Okay, so now they're going to be touching the side of the mat. Ah. I'm going to use real because that repositionable doesn't want to stick now. I guess I didn't use enough. And I think that's why I don't like the repositionable because I feel like I have to use more of it. So, all right, there we go with that. All 
All right, so that's how the, the finished product is gonna look. I'm just gonna go around and stick all these down. Okay. Ironically, now I've got a wider gap. I should have done the three quarter inch um, piece of a uh, strip and then just cut from there. So I guess we're going back to centering a little bit. Just, I just want this line and I did use, go ahead and use regular adhesive. So it's a little bit harder to pull it up, but I just want this line to kind of be this. This is what I feel like I'm going to notice is the line in the middle. And I think it's okay with a little irregular line along the side, better than this big wide gap uh, in the middle of the pieces. Now this one's too skinny. Yeah. Even that one I put permanent adhesive in, it still wasn't sticky enough. All right. Now I do need to go back and put, because I picked these up, the corners are wanting to be floppy. So I'm just gonna come back and put a little adhesive on. All right, so there's kind of the base of our layout. And now we need the embellishments, the, the decorations. And this is where we run into trouble because this is a tropical theme collection. It's one that the sun uh, summertime one is the one, if you remember, I don't really have embellishments for. Um, And I wonder what we could do. Let's see, vitamin C maybe. Have the little pineapples. They're kind of the wrong color. Um, yeah, this is all beach. I don't want any of those. Summertime, I don't have anything. Oh, I had the, I had the, um, the little this with the popsicles. Not that any of these are popsicles. I want to just say something about like sweet treats, but I do feel the need for some kind of embellishments. Like it's a problem I'm having with, with a lot of these layouts that, I mean, it's busy enough. Does it really need embellishments? I think I want to do sweet treats. I wish one of these said that. Sweet treats instead of summer fun. You are the flip to my flop. Those aren't any things I want to say. I thought at one point I had the summertime stickers, but they're not here. So let me look around and see what else I have that might work. All right, so I found this that's a tropical oasis, which kind of wouldn't be terrible, except it kind of would be terrible. So I can't find anything else that matches this collection. So I went in and pulled out all my old um, theme park stickers, although these are way the wrong colors. Magic awaits, sparks of magic, imagine that. I don't talk anything about food. Don't they know that's half of what uh, theme parks are about? things about food, but not, oh, it's got this little Dole Whip. That maybe could work somewhere. Um, treats. I thought there was one that said, I'm just here for the snacks. Found this one, totally wrong colors though. That would not work for this. This one, that one, apparently trying to match our her shirts was a bad choice and I should have started with snacks. So this is all from uh, Adventure Parks, which is the current, um, not specific to any theme park collection. So we're not gonna use um, stickers. We're gonna have to be a little bit more creative. And maybe I'm just going to write snacks in the, or treats here. And what could I use that would just be for fun? Some little stars, some little 
cupcakes. We had a cupcake border punch. This is the part that I always cut out of these videos, y'all, where I'm just sitting here thinking, what can I use? What can I use? Do I need anything? Can I leave it? Let's try putting the word on here, um, treats, and then maybe just some little stars, some little, little hearts, maybe? That could work. All right, we'll do words. So then I'm gonna use the black. We don't have any kind of in these colors. Um, I wanna say treats. Do I wanna say snacks? I think these are all treats. They're not just snacks, they are treats. Um, maybe I wanna say hooray for treats which is kind of a lot, but it'll fit in here, I hope, okay. So of course I'm gonna use my little ruler to position it. I might just stick it on top of the ruler to see how it looks first, and then decide. Just barely sticking down like one corner so it won't be that hard to pick it back up off of here. All right, so now I've written hooray. But do I want to say hooray for treats or hooray for treats? I think I want to say hooray for treats. Actually, I'm going to do hooray for in lowercase and then I'm going to do treats in uppercase because that will be fun. I definitely want an exclamation point right here. Okay. So if I do it like that, right about here. Hooray. Hooray for treats. That looks good. I'm okay with that. Um, but now I need, it, it definitely does need something. Oh, there's the little dot to my exclamation point. Hooray for treats. It needs something. Little circles, little stars oh you know what we had the mini punch trio maybe I could find that because it just had like little little hearts and little dots let's pull that one out all right it's called a mini punch trio there's another piece that looks like a flower petal but I think I'm just going to use these and I think I'm just going to punch some like out of this pink and out of this yellow and see what we can come up with that we can kind of build a little design. I've got this green, but I didn't use that green, so I don't I don't want to use it. I'm trying to see if I have pieces that are already scraps that I don't have to put into a new piece. That miss miss. Oh, but I've got that on there. I'm going to cut those little guys out. A little fussy cut. The... So these little... I don't want the flower, but the little popsicles and the little umbrella. Although the lasers had that umbrella design, didn't they? But none of that really goes with this. So let's just punch out these little... These are more like a starfish-shaped star forgot that the these punches it's the underneath where you release them oh, it's got the yellow on the back I'm just going to punch from this then I'm not even going to worry about the then we'll punch a few of these perfect All right, I probably needed one more color, but let's see what we can do with just these. I 
All right, not hating it, not hating it. Um, I need to journal. There's not really a lot to say. I think I'm gonna want a few more of these little pieces. Just gonna kind of do some little confetti, confetti journaling. I don't want the moons, the little half moons, and I don't think I like that little heart right there. I think maybe I'll do two little hearts right here. All right. So now that I've already kind of cut some of this out, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kind of do it upside down and see what I can. What else I can get in here? I just mostly want the heart and the circle so I can fit it in between here, I think a lot of places and get some extras. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get any more suns out of this piece. Sun, the little sun stars, they're not suns. But I can definitely get the hearts. Not so many of the circles. I can maybe do the circle right here. Right there. So these are gonna kind of be the same as if I had like little, those little epoxy circles of the dots, the little dimensional dots. And I probably have some somewhere that are the right um, color for this, but I don't know where they would be. I don't know what paper packs they would have come from. All right, now I've made a mess. I shouldn't have put that on that edge. I should have. Let's scoop these into my hand. I do want some more stars. I'm going to have to punch some of those out of, get another piece of that red paper. Well, unless maybe I just go, go kind of um, hold off on the stars. Don't use as many of them. Do mostly the hearts. Do a yellow one here, a pink one here, and a yellow one down here. So then I've got four though, and I don't love that four. I like the, you know, we like the um, group of threes. That right there is okay. What do you think? I could always come back and add more. So let's do that. And I think I'm going to use my uh, precision point adhesive for this. I've used a bunch of like confetti type things before, and it's just easier for me to just be able to kind of pick it up where it is, put a little dab of the glue. But you got to be certain because this glue is absolutely permanent. There is once it's dry, there is no way to um, pick these up and move them. You do have a little wiggle room while it's still wet. I think it looks cute. I'm happy with it. I might need a little more. Actually, this one, I don't, oh, I kind of don't hate the sun, but maybe I'll find one that I like the, maybe I like the back better of that one. Oh, I almost took it down backwards. That would have been bad. So I'm totally ignoring all the clustering rules. I'm actually sticking my embellishment right on the photo, which is kind of something I don't usually do. But you know, I think that we've we've changed a little bit about how we um, how we scrapbook and how we feel about photo safety to an extent. I mean, obviously, we all want our photos to last a long time. But something like this, I mean, if these photos don't last my grandchildren, my great grandchildren don't get to see these photos. I don't, these don't feel as, um, uh, historic his, as, um, as necessary to, uh, heritage. I guess that's the word I, I want. This is, this is, this is just a Disney album for fun. Um, and so I don't mind if, if maybe it's not quite as archival as some of the other things that I might scrapbook down the line. Alright, I kind of like this. Now I'm trying to decide 
if I want to keep this blue all the way around the edge, because now that this is here, I thought, oh, it might be nice to have a little bit of that yellow. I would have to do it this way, you know, like we've done before with that little eighth of an inch yellow around. But I think perhaps this is going to be fine. So um, I think I'm done. I might journal a smidge. I don't know what to write. What do we write about treats? Uh, maybe I'll write what I said earlier to you guys. Other people, you know, we all took turns enjoying the treats, but for some reason we only took pictures of Katie with them. I think I'll do that. That'll be the journaling that'll be done. Um, when you look at the, when you watch this video at the beginning of the video, when I show you what it's going to look like at the end, you'll be able to see that. So you can always go back and look at that. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to necessarily come back. So, um, next week I will actually be at Disney World again. I know it's July. I know it's a billion degrees, but you know, my daughter's still down there. She got us a screaming deal on a Disney hotel. And so I'm going down for the 4th of July with my daughter. So next week, I haven't recorded it yet, but I will be pre-recording next week's video for you. Um, so you'll still have a Theme Park Thursday video for next week, which I believe the 4th is the, a Thursday. So on Theme Park Thursday, the 4th of July, I will be happily enjoying um, Fantasy in the Sky, which is a magical Disney fireworks show they only do on the 3rd and 4th of July and the 30th and 31st of December. And that's how she talked me into going. Um, but as I've been sitting here telling you that, I think I'm going to take my black pen and do a little pen stitching around the edge because I think that that will um, give me what I feel like I need. You know, you know, I've done that. I'm going to do the little swirlies. Um, you know, I've done that before. Actually, I think I want to just do the little wavy lines. Just like that. So I'm going to go all the way around the edge with that. And then I'm going to journal right here about how we all did treats and that will be the end. So thanks very much for watching and I will uh, be back next week um, coming to you not quite live from uh, Disney World because I will have recorded at home before I left. So thanks a lot for watching and happy scrapbooking.